What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. It's been a while since I did anything in gaming news because I'll be honest with you, it's it's kind of been boring and dry and I feel like some people have been getting desperate and covering some news that doesn't really matter. So I've just kind of stepped away from the whole video game news realm and focused just more on what's interested me. And sometimes that brings me back into video game news, which is what today's video is all about. Some of you may have already heard, but Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol have been announced to be coming to the Nintendo Switch eShop. And people are excited, which I find strange because there's a Nintendo online service that has a bunch of free Super Nintendo games on it. And we got the Nintendo fans that are just excited to replay their childhood games and pay money for them instead of kind of call it like they see it and say well hold up why am i paying money for a game that's 30 years old when you could just put it up on the nintendo online service and have us play it for free as part of the service nobody seems to be caring about this i see a lot of uh big names on youtube all you know fake excited over this news as they usually are and pumping nintendo any chance they get but the reality is this is taking advantage of the customers and people should see through it and they don't. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell for notifications. And if you don't mind right now hitting that like button, I would appreciate it. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how I'm gonna handle this video, just so you guys understand what to expect. So you're not surprised because people are fragile these days. They don't want their egos hurt. So I'm just gonna let you know how I'm gonna handle it. So that way you, you understand. I'm gonna pick you up from underneath and say, you're wrong, but that's okay. Cause I've been wrong before too. Okay, so this situation with Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol is an interesting case study because I've been wrong before when it comes to ROMs as well, re-releasing on modern systems where I used to think, yeah, I'd be all for paying these to paying for them to, to, to play them again. But then the Nintendo online service came out and I'm like Oh, okay. I guess I could just pay an annual fee of what, like 20 bucks or something? I don't even, a family plan is 25. I don't know. It's cheap for 12 months of getting tons of retro games to play, which I barely even touch anyways. But regardless of that, at least they're available. And then I saw a game like Secret of Mana Collection, the, the trilogy come out where I was like, oh my God, that's my childhood. I will pay whatever I can for that game because I love that game and I'm a collector of sorts. So if, if it comes out as a physical game, I will definitely... Oh man, this is it's a deep drop here. Hope I don't die. Okay, so if it comes out as a physical, I will I will get it for my collection. And I'll... I'll I don't know. I, just make me feel all warm and cozy inside. I don't know if I'd even play it. Which, by the way, I still haven't even really played it. Because I have it for Super Nintendo. I have it for... Uh, I have it on the computer as a ROM. I have it... Uh, like everywhere I have, I have the remake on the ps4 like i played the game to death already anyways but the, the fact remains like i love that game so i i would pay for it again and the reason why i bring that up is because i'm like after i bought it i'm like why did i do that like i'm not playing it what's the point what's what is the point of this just just to make myself feel all warm and cozy that i that i got a game that was my childhood again like what what, what does that do for me Nothing. It doesn't do anything except pat myself on the back and make me feel all warm and cozy until I realize that I'm a dumbass for doing it. But that's okay because, you know, you make mistakes and you learn from them. And then I see the Zombies Ate My Neighbors coming out with Ghoul Patrol as like a, a two-pack uh, from Disney. And I look on the internet and everyone is so excited about it. And I'm like, w w did I miss something? Like, this game was good i i never like fell in love with it. i know a lot of people did my neighbor uh when i was a kid it was like one of his favorite games and he'd bring it over and try to play it with me i'm like yeah like I, I wasn't really feeling it like it was it was okay which is fine it's fine everyone can enjoy what they want but my point being like that game is not to me worth standalone and i'm saying this as someone who bought a standalone game like secret of mana saying that was a mistake i shouldn't have done that because i'm not even playing it anyways and I'm just encouraging this practice from companies to re-release these old games as as uh, physical games again when you don't really need that. I guess, I guess, okay, I guess if it's physical and say you want to preserve history and you're worried about your Super Nintendo dying and a cartridge not working for some reason or you just want to play it in, in uh, higher quality HDMI or whatever your rationale is for it, 
oh, okay. But, but to buy it digitally doesn't make much sense to me because these games are old ROMs that are plentifully available on the internet everywhere if you just know where to look. Like, it's not, it's not a big secret to pirate games. And oh, by the way, it's not illegal to pirate games as a lot of people might make you think it is. Everyone's a lawyer when it comes to pirating games. Uh, I don't know, I'll be the first to admit, I don't know the specifics to the, the background of how long a game has to be out for before it's like everyone's property or whatever like that. Um, but I do know if you own a physical copy of the game, you can get the ROM of it as a backup. Well, technically, it's supposed to be you making a backup of it. But regardless, I, I mean, that's splitting hairs when it comes to what the laws are on pirating games. Point being, I think it's hysterical that this game, not only coming out on Switch, but I saw it was announced on coming out on Steam as well, for the computer. I'm like, it's it's literally just a remake of uh, of the ROM. Like, it's it's not, they're not remaking the game, but they're just reprinting it. Like, it's 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 nothing special like yeah they added a couple like uh, video clips of of the creators and the, the, the creative directors of the game or whatever the producers great you can get that stuff on youtube nowadays like i feel like it's so it's so old school to try to get money off of doing such minimal work it's so it's so funny that people are just like all about this and and like i said if you are more power to you but I don't understand why everyone's all excited about the Nintendo online service. And then they announced that these games are not coming to that. They're just going to be uh, a digital uh, version. They haven't even announced a physical. I, I heard like limited run and uh, platinum games and all, all, all these other uh, limited uh, release companies that are looking into getting the securing the rights to be able to print it. But it's it's a digital copy of a ROM that people will be paying money for. I would expect, because it's Disney, minimum $19.99, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to slap a $29.99 price tag on this, which is just hysterical to me for people that could literally just buy this game on the Super Nintendo or download the ROM on the computer, especially with people that will be buying it for Steam. That one kind of... I, I never understood people buying ROMs on Steam. <laughs> Square Enix sells a lot of those. Uh, and Sega, too. It's just funny to me. I'm like, I mean, do these people not know about pirating games? Do they not know about the availability of ROMs? Do they not know that you can play all these games on the computer without paying money towards these greedy companies that are overcharging way too much for properties that weren't even theirs in the first place? They, like, bought the rights just to get money out of them this was i believe what konami was the publisher of of the original um zombies ate my neighbors and now it's disney and the rom is being held by like dot mu or whatever like that i don't, I don't know i don't know i just I, I find it funny to me and the craziest part was when i when i saw this news come out i think it was what nintendo everything or or one of those sites nintendo uh life.com one of them broke the news and i'm just like Okay, cool. Those will be coming to the Nintendo online service. Uh, okay, I, I might play them. I might not. I don't, I don't care. It's, an, it's another ROM from back in the day. Like, whatever. Got plenty of those, personally. Uh, does it doesn't really affect me one way or the other. And then I saw a bunch of people online getting all excited about it. I was like, man, people really enjoyed this title. Good for them. And then I researched it some more to see when it was coming to the online service. And I'm like, uh-oh, wait a second. People are excited to spend money on a 30-year-old ROM. What? Am I am I crazy? Because I don't I don't understand the rationale. Coming from, like I said, someone who purchased the Secret of Mana collection, and I'm like, why'd I do that? I don't play it. And if I did want to play it, I have like 30 different outlets to play it already. There was very little reason to pay for it just to be able to play it on my Switch on the go. Because I, I don't do that anyway. So why why did I think I needed to do that? And I feel like that's happening again right now with Disney going through the old Lucasfilm games and, and trying to make as much money as possible. Which, like I always say, that's a business is right to do. That's why they're in business. And Disney is 
one of the best at making as much money as possible. A house of mouse knows how to exploit everything. Uh, and, and people will support it. They'll say, oh, you're just a hater. You're, you're, you're pirating video games. You're a horrible person. I'm like, yeah, you, you're defending a company that literally sent lawyers after a family for putting, what was it? A, a Spider-Man logo on a tombstone of a kid that died of cancer when he was like eight years old or something like that. And, and they were trying to sue the family for that. And then it became public knowledge and, and then they backed off. So you can go ahead and defend Disney all you want to your heart's content. But my, my point being with this situation is it brings up a fascinating argument that I don't see a lot of the big guys talking about. I see them doing what they always do, just pumping and padding the numbers for Nintendo and getting excited about fluff and not actually talking about the core issue here of what's acceptable as be, being a consumer and what's not. That's the crux of the issue that that's eluding everyone right now. If you're if you're okay with spending 20 or 30 bucks or whatever, they haven't even announced the price yet uh, on this on this re-release of a ROM. I mean, more power to you. I always say that it's your money. You can spend it how you want to. I don't like how these companies are exploiting these old ROMs beyond what they should be beyond what I believe a fair value should be. I guess that's what I'm getting at with this. I, I, I feel like if a fair value of the game is free because a service exists for these ROMs to be put on right now and free as in you pay for the annual membership and you just get it as part of that. That's that's what we've been conditioned as as Nintendo Switch owners to, to expect for, for Super Nintendo games and NES games and maybe down the road some other games would be great. But these companies that are trying to go around that, like Konami did with Contra and Castlevania Collection, uh, as Square Enix is doing with uh, Secret of Mana, uh, I'd expect them to do something with Chrono Trigger eventually too, because, I mean, that's one of those properties that's just... I can't believe they haven't touched that for so long. But, but my point being is, like, these companies are exploiting these old-ass games that take literally zero effort in most cases just to upload the ROM to a cartridge if they even end up making it physical but if they don't it's just uploading the ROM to to a, a download and getting money from that forever and, and most times it's people that have already bought the game six times and they'll be buying it again which is crazy to me but again it's your money you can do what you want I guess what I'm getting at with this whole situation is I just I find it funny especially with Nintendo fans that they will defend a business exploiting them instead of questioning it instead of saying whoa, whoa, whoa hold up we got this service that we we participate with Nintendo online and and most people I know they'll say oh you got to pay money for that yeah, most of you pay for it okay don't, don't give me that bs of oh I don't pay for Nintendo online service because you get plenty of awesome retro games on that I mean S Super Metroid Super Mario World, uh Legends of the Link to the Past just to name off the top of my head a few like there there's so many great games on that service so it's worth it. Then not to mention the, the online functionality, the Pac-Man, 99, Tetris 99, you know, Mario, Super Mario 30th anniversary. Tons of great reasons to have it, most of you do. So don't lie and say, oh, I don't pay for that. I, I don't pay for that service. Okay, first off, pony up the 20 bucks for an annual service that gives you all these free games with it. But if that's the issue, okay. So you'd rather save $20 a year on all these benefits that you get and, and you'd say, okay, but I'm okay with spending 20 to $30 on a game, or in this case, two games, uh, that I think the, the retro market, I mean, I think if you want to buy them on the Super Nintendo physically, I think together, what is it? It couldn't be more than a hundred bucks, I would guess, but they hold their value, which is the craziest part about it. People are like, oh, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on it. They go up in value over time. So if you, if you download a digital version of the game, that's just sunk money. And if you if you buy the cartridge on on eBay or Craigslist or at a, a pawn shop or a thrift store, you you get that game and you have the value that you could resell in the future potentially for more money. It's kind of like the stock market in a way. So these people are are are, are trying to tell other people what's acceptable and what's not without stepping back and saying, "Oh, we are getting boned on this deal." Nobody's questioning it. It's just. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. And I wasn't going to make a video on this situation, but I had a couple people on Twitter hit me up uh, and say, please talk about this because I, 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 I showed my frustration on Twitter with a meme that I made 
which got like uh, 50 likes or something. It was crazy. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I mean, this is what Nintendo fans are. They just, they just want to spend money instead of get stuff for free. And, and they don't question it. I don't, I, I will for the life of me never understand it. I never understand it. Uh, and, and it's just, if we keep as gamers participating in paying for these old ROMs to be re-released over and over again, then that's going to encourage them to do it more and more instead of, oh, no one bought that. Let's just throw it on the service next time. So I guess you could say as, as gamers, we're creating a market that shouldn't exist. It should just go on this free service that was genius. I didn't want to be buying the games again. I didn't, I didn't want the, the Nintendo, uh, what did you call it on the, on the Wii U and in the Wii where you, you pay for these games on the eShop, the virtual console, there we go, uh, and, and get them just on that console. And then you'd have to pay money to import them to the Wii U, which was crazy in itself. But then I was way worried that Nintendo was gonna make you pay money to import them to the Switch, which thankfully they didn't go that direction. But now we got this other problem with all these companies that are just like, oh, we, we got these rights to these old ass games that we aren't doing anything with. People could download them for free on the internet, but let's try to make them feel bad about that and then charge an exorbitant amount of money for these retro titles that they don't put any work into. If, if, if they were like remaking these games or, or adding levels to them or doing something to change them up, I'd be like, okay, that, that justifies them making a separate release form. But if they're just uploading the ROMs, come on now, let's, let's be real about this, guys. Again, though, like I said, I'm going to end this in, in, in a sandwich approach and say, do what you want to do. It's just kind of weird to me. That's all. <laughs> Be interested to hear what you guys have to say this, about this. I'm sure it's a, a, a very um, divisive uh, conversation, and I'm very intrigued to see where, where the comment section goes. I'll be definitely reading every single comment. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash, 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 smash,